so here is part two of our Unify setup. Today we're going to be going through the configuration for that project on our Unify platform. We're going to be installing the Unify Talk and upgrading all the equipment, set up the networks, set up the Wi-Fi and do some testing. So let's jump on a PC and get started. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get the controller powered up first. Let's get the gateway powered up. So let's do that. There she goes. And let's give this an internet connection. I use my phone and I adopt the devices from this point and then I move it into the client's site. If you look carefully, you can see the actual OS booting up. It's giving you a little progress bar there. So we just got to wait till it gets to a point and then we can actually adopt this into our Unify platform. Right, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see on my phone, it's found the device and it's asking for it to be added into my uh, platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You can see it's going ahead and trying to do a speed test. And then it goes ahead and completes the setup. So this is what we do to initialize these controllers in the first instance. This is what we do to get them onboarded. Okay, we get them connected into the network. We get them uh, adopted onto the system and then we will configure it specifically for our client's needs. So right now this controller is having its uh, firmware updated. So it's updating the firmware. So we just let this get on with uh, what it's doing and we just get this fully updated get the firmware updated, get it provisioned, then we assign it to the client and uh, get uh, the configuration started. So now that we actually have the controller adopted onto our Unify platform, we're gonna go ahead and do some programming and then come back and actually start adopting all the other pieces of equipment. So here we are in the Unify configuration on my desktop PC. And the first thing we need to do is head over down to this cog at the bottom and then we can click on the control plane and from here we can see that the UCG is on 4.1.22 and the network has been updated to 9.1.120 as of the date of this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and install the Unify Talk. Uh, all the other components already installed that we need so we just need to install the Unify Talk. And we can see that that's on 3.5.4. Now what I typically like to do is to go ahead and turn off the automatic application update. We like to do those updates manually. We don't like the system to update and we get that done. Next, we're gonna go to networks and we already have an existing network on here on the 192.168.1.1 network. Uh, we need to change that to 192.168.1.1. Uh, 10.1 so I'm going to go ahead and change that here we're going to uh, make sure that we've turned off auto scaling and I'm going to set IP address range to start from 31 next I'm going to go and add a new virtual network and I'm going to call this uh, office and I'm going to put this on 192.168.1.1 and on VLAN 20 this is going to help us create segregation on our network. Now we need to set up a guest network and we set this one up for users who want to jump on the internet, but they need to be on a completely segregated network. So we're going to set this one up on 192.168.50.1 and we're going to go uh, in here now and set this one up as a guest network. And we're going to change this to VLAN 50 and click add. So there are our networks. Now we've got this all set up and programmed. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna adopt the equipment uh, piece by piece. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to get the switch now and we're just gonna plug that in. There's a power light there. What we need to do now is connect this to our controller.
we've got the adoption light flashing there. What we then do is we head over onto our app and you can see there it's come up, it's showing the switch ready for adoption. So we go ahead and we click adopt and it will adopt that into this controller because of course we've connected into this controller, it's gonna adopt that into this controller. It's been adopted and now it's just running the update. So it's updating the actual firmware of the device. Again, this is really uh, useful because it just does it automatically. We don't need to go in and actually do that. It will just go ahead and do that update. Okay, so the switch has been adopted. It's now live and kicking and it's doing its thing. So that's that part done. Next thing we're gonna move on to is we're going to now get the access point. So we're gonna get the access point connected in and get that adopted. Uh, there you go, uh, it's picked it up, it's telling me it's found a new device, so let's go ahead and click Adopt. And again, this will adopt and update, so let's let that get on with it, and uh, then we'll come back. Okay, you can see that we have our access point adopted, it's gone solid blue now, so that's done. And we can tell, uh, take a look at the app. If we take a look at the app on my phone, we can see that it's shown there. Um, if I can bring it a little bit closer, there you go, get that into focus. So you can see there that it's actually been adopted and fully upgraded and working on the app. So now what we need to do is get the phone adopted into this uh, ecosystem. Uh, so let's move this stuff out the way and put the phone in situ. As you can see, here it is showing that it's connected. What we need to do is go and program this up. This is a slightly different setup than all the other unified pieces of equipment. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump on my PC and complete this installation from there. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna create some Wi-Fi networks. So the first one we need to do is we're gonna set up one for the office. So I'm gonna call it Office uh, Wi-Fi and um, we'll set a password up for this. So I'm gonna set a little uh, temporary password for this for the moment. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to connect this to the office network. I'm gonna come down to the bottom here and go add network. If we can go in again, we can create a new one and we can give this the name of guest uh, Wi-Fi. And again, we can put in a, a random password and then I can drop this down and go for guest. If I go into manual again, we can now connect this up to our captive portal and then we can go in here and we can configure the captive portal. That's completely outside the scope of this video, so I'm not gonna do that right now. So one of the things that we like to do with a guest network is we'd like to throttle it down. So if we go create a new profile, we can come into this screen here and then we can say, right, what's this for? Um, we can say this is for uh, guest. And then we can say, right, well, what do we want to limit to? So we can say, well, let's just limit it to say two megabits um, down and one megabit up. So we're basically restricting how users can gain access to the internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Okay, so there's my little guest profile there. So I'm gonna go back to Wi-Fi now. And if we come down here, we can see that we have our um, Wi-Fi speed limit. Again, if we put a tick in the box, drop that down and choose guest. That's gonna use that guest profile for uh, limiting the speed of that connection. And I'm just gonna go add Wi-Fi. So I've now got these two Wi-Fi's here. We have a one for the office users to access, uh, or obviously the office network. So if they come in with their mobile phone, they can connect to the office Wi-Fi. Guests who walk in through the door and they want to use uh, the internet to be able to go and check their own emails, whatever it might be, would connect to the guest Wi-Fi. As you saw previously, that uh, we have completely segregated the network uh, so that they run completely on different networks. And if we go and look at the topology, you can see we have the internet coming in here. We have our co uh, cloud controller here. We have our switch here. We have our access point over here. We now have our phone that we now need to go ahead and configure.
Okay, so now I've configured those Wi-Fi connections, we need to go ahead and make sure they work. So let me go and grab a phone and check it works. Right, so here I am on my phone. I'm going to try and connect this to the two different Wi-Fi's I set up. Quickly go into my settings here, and we're looking for the Wi-Fi that we've just set up. There's the first one, so there's Office, and we'll put in the, the password. Okay, so I'm connected to the Office Wi-Fi. That's working fine. I'm going to quickly just do a little speed test. Okay, so that's brilliant. That's telling me what I'm getting when I'm connected to the Office Wi-Fi of the access point. So that's great. So now what we need to do is go and connect to the guest portal. Okay, so I'm now connected to the guest portal. Let's go back. And because I'm now connected to guest, I'm restricted. So if I do a speed test, it should show the restriction. And there you go. It shows the restriction. It shows that I'm not able to go any faster than the two megabits on the down and one megabits on the up. So that's great. So that's tested the configuration perfectly fine. Now let's move on to the telephone. Okay, so moving on now to the Unify Talk. So we've plugged our phone in, it's uh, showing up on the system, it's now telling us to go ahead and uh, set up this device. So I'm going to click on Setup, bring you into this nice welcome screen. We go down and we read and we agree to these terms, set the country, and we start to set up. I'm going to say no to this. So it's obviously picked up myself as I'm the only user on the system right now and I'm just going to say use it for internal calls only and go next. So this is a legal requirement, you've actually got to fill this in, you've got to put in the details of where the phone's going to be cited. So I'm going to put that details in and then we're going to move on to next. You can see that we've gone through that configuration, I'm going to start Unify Talk. Let's head over now to the icon at the top for Unify Talk. And we can, we can see here, we've got a whole bunch of settings now. We can go through numbers and subscription, porting, call settings, voicemail, and so forth. So you can see that we've got a whole bunch of uh, configuration to go through here. Now, what I'm not going to do in this video is go through all this configuration because we do have a video that we've already done this with. So what I'm now just gonna do is go ahead and get this configured up for the client. So here we are, we're over at the phone. Now, unfortunately, until the uh, company is verified uh, with their location, as I said, it's a legal requirement to have their location verified for emergency services purposes, we're not gonna be able to demonstrate the phone in its working capacity. But let me just show you the phone. This is the phone working now. It's um, set up on the Unify platform. It's not assigned to any user at the moment, it's just assigned to myself. So as you can see, if we slide across the interface, we can we can either touch on the screen and go to whichever menu item. If I slide down from the top, you can see that we've got this um, this interface here, and we could, for example, even go into the camera and turn the camera on. So there's a camera up here, and you can see there we are. There's the camera working. So that's it for today. That's our video on our Unify full deployment. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. My name's Rob from Marvelous Computer Services. Please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.